Hello world, I'm Zanin, your host for this episode of CVE Deep Dive. And in this episode, we're taking a look at an RCE in a SharePoint installation. SharePoint is basically a file sharing slash cloud solution by Microsoft that allows you to share files with your coworker, host websites and more. For example, every file that you store in your Teams team in the file section is actually stored on a SharePoint somewhere in the background. And an independent security researcher called Alex Bernberg found an RCE in the SharePoint Enterprise Edition 2019 and 2016 released before May. Now luckily this issue has been resolved with the June update of SharePoint. But let's take a closer look at the impact of this vulnerability as well as how it actually worked. To know what kind of impact this vulnerability has, let's quickly calculate the CVSS score with our common metrics that we know from other CVE deep dives. So first of all, we can exploit this over the network. The complexity is a bit high, as you will see later in this video. It requires low privileges since it's only possible if you're already signed in as a user that can create websites, but it doesn't require any user interaction and you can change the scope and get some shell in the end with it. Now, as for confidentiality, integrity and availability, it highly depends which user is actually running SharePoint. But if a high privileged user is running it, then of course the impact will be higher than when a functional user or a specific user for the application is running it. So the overall score is somewhere around six to eight and a half, which is somewhere between medium and high. This vulnerability happens because an attacker can exploit a deserialization issue that happens with user supplied data. So in order to understand this issue, we have to first learn how SharePoint is deserializing the session state, how an attacker can write arbitrary data to the session state and how to leak the state key of the data. So let's dig a little bit into SharePoint's code base, shall we? In the wizard connect to data step step four. It's a wizard to connect some data to do some data binding. So of course it calls some UI binding web control clause over here at one to perform the data binding. Now if we take a look at this data binding clause, we will see that while loading the data, it checks if the data should come from an other web part, for example, a website or a part of a website, it will not do what it usually would do. But instead, it will read the custom session key, which is a user control argument in the request called dump CSK and then try to load some web port data by using this custom session key. Now if we take a look at the try load, the state key, which is now user controlled, is used to get a buffer and then serialize it later on via a binary formatter in an unsafe way. So here you see we map the buffer into a memory stream and then deserialize it in an unsafe manner. There is some user supplied data that gets deserialized in the end. But how can an attacker use this to write arbitrary data into the session state and manipulate what gets deserialized in the end. Now, if we take a closer look at this fetch binary data method, we see that first the key that is the user supplied key via the web request is used in something called state manager peak state. And if we take a closer look at the peak state, we will see that the peak state uses the attacker controlled key via the state SQL session get item bytes method. Now this get item byte methods with the attacker controlled key executes a stored procedure in the database of SharePoint. Taking a closer look at this stored procedure, we see that the sessions are stored in a table called DBO sessions. We have an item ID, the create time, etc., etc. It's just a session storage. And there are two more stored procedures, namely proc add item and proc update item. These two stored procedures are used in the set and release item bytes exclusive method from the same class. And depending on if the new item is set to true or false, it will execute the proc add item or the proc update item stored procedures. If an attacker wants to access this add item stored procedure, the way to go is to go via the create state because there the set and release item bytes exclusive is used with the new item set to true. Now this create states method is used in the set child state from main process as you can see down here, which is used in the set child state as you can see over here. The set child state is 
is in turn then called from the update metadata and add to session state as you can see here which is called from the set attachment as you can see here now this set attachment method is called in the play method which is called whenever an event is triggered the http posted file parameter that will be used to create a new entry in the session state originates from the file attachment upload which is attacker control now the attachment has to be added to a special type of list called an infopuff list on SharePoint but while intercepting the traffic the researcher were able to identify that by sending a crafted post request you can actually add an attachment to any kind of list and not only to the infopuff. The serialized key of the list can be obtained by scraping the HTML code of the add item page. Now if you want the state key of the data, it can be obtained by issuing a get request to the layout 15 form server attachment ASPX pub, which uses the file download method which needs the FID, the SID, the key and the DL. The FID can be any string, the SID has to be the canary key sent in the request, then the key which has to be crafted specifically and DL which has to be set to the IP. Now the SID can be actually found in the cookie header. So now that we know how this exploit is possible, let's actually take a look at the exploit. Now this exploit has over 600 lines of code so we will not take a look at them individually however you can find the full disclosure with the full code of the exploits on the SSD secure disclosure website. What I want to cover here is the workflow of the exploit which is to first create a malicious site then create this custom list associate the list with an info path, upload a file upload a page connect to data and lastly delete the site with this workflow we will first write something into the session state and then by using this connect to data part deserialize it and that will allow the attacker to execute any command that they like and this is how it looks in action so once a page has been uploaded you call this command and you see oh i am the administrator and the user has become an admin i hope you enjoyed this video if you did leave a like and subscribe and we will see you in the next cve deep dive bye bye